month of month of March. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jay and today I'm here with my March 2019 wrap up part two. Part one of this wrap up is the first five books that I read and this is the last six. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I'm going to talk about in this video is Odd One Out by Nick Stone. I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. The book follows Courtney, also known as Coop and Jupiter, who have been best friends since as long as they can remember. Coop has always had a crush on Jupe. The only problem is, is that Jupe will never reciprocate those feelings because she identifies as a lesbian. When new girl Ray comes to town and both teens start to find themselves being interested in her, things get a little bit messy. I think that this book is a good book for those who are questioning their sexuality and identity. It really shows the thoughts and feelings that a lot of teenagers in today's society probably feel on a daily basis. The book is split into three parts. Each part is one of the teenager's points of view. The relationship complexities between each of the three teenagers are both confusing and messy at times, but I think that they were really well done and they really did showcase what a lot of teenagers their age would act like and how they would react to the situations they were put in. I did really love Coop's point of view the best. I found him very relatable and funny. Ray I found very childish and annoying. I didn't really care for her character. I liked Jupe a lot more than I liked Ray, but less than I liked Courtney. I think that she was a good character, but her decisions were not the best. I think that the diversity in this book is also well done. Coop is a straight black male. Jupe is an adopted biracial teen who has two dads and identifies as a lesbian, and then Ray is a mix between black and Irish and she's also questioning her identity. The only major concern I had with this book was the amount of unchallenged biphobia in this book. Other than that I really enjoyed it but some of the comments in here I feel could be very hurtful towards those people. The next book I read I was not the biggest fan of. It is The Boy Who Drew Monsters by Keith Donahue. I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows Jack Peter who is now 10 years old. Three years earlier he almost drowned with his best friend Nick. Since that day Jip has not left his house and to pass the time he draws monsters that have begun to terrorize his family. His mother Holly decides to visit a priest and his housekeeper who tell them a story about a shipwreck long ago. Jip's father begins to notice things lurking on the beach at night and that's when Nick starts to realize that there is a connection between what Jip draws and what is lurking through the night. The book started off very very slow and I was contemplating whether or not I should just put it down and forget about it but your girl pushed through. The book just felt like it was going around in circles. Nothing ever really happened. The only thing that seemed to be happening was that the two parents were being skeptical of each other and Nick and Jip were fighting the entire time. I personally was able to call the big twist reveal thing that got announced fairly soon in the book which was very disappointing to me because that seems to be the reason why everybody loves this book so much but I think because I knew what was going on I didn't have the big wow factor that everyone else seems to have. This is another case of the concept of the book seemed so cool to me, but the execution just ultimately fell flat. The next book, if y'all watched my reading vlog, you know how much I struggled with this book. It is The Beast Player by Nahoko Uhashi, and I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars. I wanted to like it so much more than I did. So in this world, giant water serpents called Toda are used by the army to protect the country's border. The defending kingdom is protected by these giant flying beasts that they call the royal beasts. Neither country realizes the suffering that they cause these animals by using them as a weapon. A young girl named Ellie is 10 years old when she becomes an orphan when her mother is blamed for the Toda dying. Soon later, Ellen discovers that she is able to communicate with royal beasts and she needs to decide who she can trust with this knowledge and who is actually an enemy. So this isn't a bad 
book, I think that a lot of people would really enjoy it. It just wasn't my cup of tea. I found it very slow and honestly just really boring. I didn't find that anything really happened, but a lot of people say that the atmosphere this author brings forth in the book is really great. So I don't know if I just wasn't in the mood for it or I just was not feeling it, but was not for me. I had a big problem with how Ellen talked about this huge catastrophe that happened early on in her ancestry line, but we never get told what this big disaster is until like three pages left of the book. It's not three pages, it's like three chapters, but still it was really far into the book and by that point I was just like, that's what it was like it was so underwhelming I was just so disappointed but I did enjoy the relationship between Ellen and Leland one of the royal beasts I think that their dynamic was really well done but that was pretty much the only thing I enjoyed about this book so if you're personally into epic fantasies then I would check it out but I'm not really into epic fantasies so not surprising I wasn't a huge fan. The next book I have 100% I'm going to have a full review up on my channel some point about this book because I freaking loved it. It's Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It follows these three girls who live on Saw Hill Rock Island and basically Girls have been going missing from this island for a very, very long time and there's a rumor, legend going around that the collector, a monster, basically hunts these girls and then eats them and that's why they disappear and no body is ever found. And it's basically the story of these three girls and how if they choose to come together and fight the collector, then they may be able to stop him before he strikes again. But it is just so creepy and atmospheric and I just love the three girls so much. It's just such a like strong feminist vibe and I was just here for it and also like creepy atmosphere. You know your girl loves herself some creepy shit. So I was just here for it. Wait for my review because I have a lot of thoughts on this book but it'll probably be up sometime like in the next two weeks because your girl has to actually film it and then edit it and your girl lazy but eventually will be there. And then the final book that I read for the month of March 2019 is Unleaving by Melissa Ostrom. I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. I found it really good but really hard to read. It follows 19 year old Maggie who has decided to leave her college after being sexually assaulted by a group of jocks that are popular in her school at a off-campus party. After pressing charges, she leaves her hometown in order to live with her aunt, Ren, who is a recluse who lives off of the coast of Lake Ontario. As time goes on, Maggie starts to cope with what happened to her, but then she is contacted by a girl named Jane Cannon who has a similar experience to her and is asking for advice. And it's basically the story of Maggie's recovery while trying to decide how she's going to help this girl, if she's going to help this girl, and what that's going to mean for her. But it is such a hard story to read, but it was so good at the same time. The huge focus in this book is Maggie's recovery. There's no romance whatsoever, which I really liked that that was a part of the story. It is mentioned a couple of times how, like, since what happened to her, she doesn't feel like she could ever let anybody touch her or get close to her again. And I just thought that it was a very well done portrayal of rape survivors and what they go through. There was a lot of flashbacks to what happened to Maggie and episodes of her PTSD, but I thought that it was really well done. It never went into like huge graphic detail about what happened to her, but it was told in a way that like you could still figure out what happened, if that makes any sense. The book is extremely character driven and I loved every single character in this book. Honestly, the support system that Maggie finds up at her aunt's house is just so great. She meets Sam who is somewhat of a single father to a little girl named Kate. The mother is very absent. Her name is Linny, but she is also a big part of this story and it also follows her recovery as well and just how Maggie and Linny come together to support each other and it was just such a beautiful story. I really, really suggest you guys try it out. There's obviously a lot of trigger warnings that go along with this 
book, the biggest one being Rape. I definitely recommend you guys check it out if you can deal with that content because the strength that Maggie finds not only in herself but those around her is just really well done in my opinion. So definitely, definitely check it out if you guys are interested. The one biggest complaint that I do have about this book though is that Maggie called Ren her aunt the aunt for most of the story and I just didn't get why she was called the aunt. Like it wasn't my aunt or just Aunt Ren. Like it was literally the aunt and I was like Nobody talks like that, stop it. But that was really the only complaint and obviously that's like super minor, it just got on my nerves. But again, highly recommend you guys check it out if you can handle that kind of content. All right guys, so that was my part two wrap up for March 2019. Check out part one if you guys are interested in the first five books that I read for this month. And let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye.